Hi, so today I'm going to talk about how to set up this workflow here, so how to integrate uh, the Jenkins build server with the Git bucket remote repository. So to download Jensen, Jenkins, just go to the Jenkins website and then pick the operating system you're on. I'm on Windows, so I already downloaded the Windows um, Jenkins zip file and I just unzipped it and then ran the uh, Jenkins Microsoft installer. And then it's a 32-bit um, program, so it installs to here. And then um, I found on, uh, on Stack Overflow that you might have some problems with starting the Jenkins uh, server. And so you might need this batch file. I've configured Jenkins to run on 8082 and um, Jetty, which is running the Git Bucket remote repository, to be on 8081. So once you've done that, you can um, you can start each one of those. So I've, I just put shortcuts to each batch file on the on the desktop, so you can easily start them. So here's Jetty starting, and here's is Jenkins. Jen Jenkins takes less time to start up. And so once they've, uh, and I've, yeah, so once they've started up, you just open up your browser. We started yet. Yep, so Jenkins is fully up and running. It's a message you'll get if Jenkins is working. So I can go to, I think this is my Jenkins. 8082 and the jetty is still taking time to run. Here we go. So this is Jenkins, and this is what you'll see as the this is the dashboard. But you won't have any projects here, so this is where your projects are. So the first thing you're going to need to do is configure Jen Jenkins. So tell it where Ant is, tell it where Maven is, etc., etc. Um, but before we do that, we'll actually um, install some plugins. So you go into Manage Jenkins and Manage Plugins, and you'll see um, a bunch of updates if you just in, if you just install Jenkins. And here you can see your installed plugins. So I'll show you what you'll need. You'll need the um, Git Bucket plugin. To, for Git bucket, so it's got its own um, plugin, which is very nice. And then I also suggest having an email extension plugin, and then um, the popular Git plugins um, for Git. So you'll find them in available, and then you can just uh, filter through and install the plugins that you uh, want. So once you've installed them, you'll need to restart Jenkins. For the plugins to be active, just just like Eclipse. So you, then you'll go back to your dashboard, and then you're going to want to create a new item. So we'll call it Test Bit Bucket. So I'll quickly talk about each project. The Freestyle project is typically the one you want. It's got the most flexibility. The Maven project, I don't know what the benefit is of using the Maven project. You lose some of the options you have in Freestyle project, so I advise against using Maven project. I don't have any experience with this guy. This guy I know is for running uh, multiple configurations in your build, so maybe if you've got like some C++ project, you want to build both Intel um, and Microsoft um, compiler versions. For instance, or um, if you're using, if you're doing a web project and you want to test um, all the different browsers on all the different operating systems, that's your guy for that. So click OK. Very very slow on my laptop. All right, so you can enter in a description, of the project, just a test, um, your Git bucket URL. So I'll fire up a Git bucket. I'm running on 8081, so navigate to uh, Git Bucket. Oh, come on. 
Pokemon. Oh, and I th on that, I have to log in as root root. And I've already got um, this some repo set up, which I added um, some a Maven project to. So it's, this is a, a Maven project, and it packages to a jar. So we need the HTTP address. Enter it in there, and um, we'll just enable that guy. So you can. You've got a lot of options here to notify when that job configuration has changed. Someone else has changed this. Um, so we'll keep going down here um, to our source code manager is git. And I've already created my credentials, but you go into here and you go roots are uh, root. So root is the username, root is the password. But she's already there for me, so I'll just select that there. It's the master branch. Branch you can um, specify a branch there. Um, just have that as auto. So here's where you um, tell tell Jenkins ha um, when to build your project. You can build it periodically after other projects are built, or when changes or when the change is pushed to Git bucket. So that's the most efficient way. So this. This is the same as um, change to push to GitHub, except with Git Bucket because it's running on our um, machine. The HTTP postback will will be successful. Um, this will only work on GitHub if your computer is accessible to the internet. So that's the thing with the with these options. Uh, otherwise, what you can do is you can just check your repository periodically, and that's this guy here, the poll, and then you enter in some. Um, expression here you can read about that but for instance if you wanted it every five minutes the expression looks something like this very weird bizarre sort of thing but anyway we're not going to do that we're just going to have our um, build when changes a push to git bucket so here we can enter in our build step so invoke top level main targets and firstly i want to clean the directory just just because i, I just want this to um, function as to build a clean a clean um, project every single time. So you can keep adding build um, build goals. And now I'll just call package, which we'll also call test and compile. And now for the post build actions. So what we can do is we can publish JUnit test results. And there's a lot of options here. You can. I'm just. I'm just going through everything really quickly to set up a basic project. And my tests happen to um, publish to here. Target Surefire reports, and they're just all XML um, files. And then we can add another one and email notifications. So. Send email for every unstable build. This is by far the most useful step. So I'll show you that in action soon enough. And this is it. This is the project set up. So look at all everything it does. It checks out our, um, our, Git, our repository. Whenever there's a change, it builds it. It emails us um, any, any problems. What we can also do is we can... Um, in um sorry in a, in the post build step we can also um, archive the artifact so Dan where'd it go where'd that go it's just gone where is it here we are so files to archive it's in uh, target and it's a jar, just get rid of that. So it's just saving options that I've already typed in. So, so and now what this will also enable us to do is download the latest jar. Mind you though, I don't have the dependencies with this jar, so the jar won't run. But um, you can just check out the POM and get the dependencies and put them in your class pass and, and run this jar. That's very useful as well. 
and that's it. So now let's uh, let's build this guy. Build now. And now you can see it in here, so you can have up to two projects building in a time, the way I've configured this. From memory, I think this will fail. Um, yeah, so I've got this test here that is going to fail. So our build will fail. But while that's building, let's show you how to configure um, the HTT post back that you need to configure in your repository so that whenever a commit happens, um, it, um, Jenkins will know about it and then build. So here's the repository. Go into settings. Hello. Go into settings. Service hooks. And that's the hook you need to enter in. I've already got it entered in, but that's it there. So there's the 8082, um, which my Jenkins is running on, the port the port number Jenkins is running on. And so that will launch a post back. If I just enter this in, you can see uh, try posting. Hopefully that didn't cause another build. But anyway, yep, so our build has failed. Oh no. So we'll go into our um go into here and we can go into console output. And now we can see the output by Maven, just as if you'd run Maven um, clean and then Maven package on the command line. And here are the tests. And we expect one of these tests to fail. So one failure. Oh no. So let's fix that failure. So let's see if it's emailed us. I don't think it's emailed because it's the first build. So we'll see if it emails us once we fix this test. Save. Um, here's my command prompt. Get status. Um, yeah, so I've already got this project. Um, this repository um, clone locally. Um, I'm just going to quickly do. So keep commit A to just skip the staging and then a message. Um, fixed test. And now let's push the origin. And we enter root root. All right, let's see if this is working. Let's go to our Jenkins home, and hopefully we should see that a build has been scheduled for this project. So there we go. Building queue, test, bit bucket. So look at that. I didn't need to do anything in Jenkins. I didn't need to click here. It's done it itself, and now it is building. And this time, all the tests should pass, and then hopefully we will get an email. So the email you'll get, um, the address, I mean, the address the email will be sent to will be the email you can configure on your, um, on your git command line. So it'll be this guy here. So hopefully I will get an email there. Almost done. Hurry up. Here we go. All right. Let's see if I get an email. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, no email. What is going on? Come on. We've got the pushback, the uh, postback working, but not the email. So we'll just check that again. Sorry. Go into our project, can, can configure it at any time. We can see the test history there. It's gone now. Too, too fast, mate. So, yeah, down here in the email, send the email to every unstable build. So, mate, it's... Oh, sorry, here. Send separate email to individuals who broke the build. Sorry, so this guy here, it only sends emails to the ones you have in your recipients. The send separate email to individuals who broke the build will send the email to um, whoever's commit 
um, the, to the email address you have configured here when you do a commit, which is there. So we'll save this. All right. So, so we're going to have to. Um, here we go. Should make this as broke test now. Broke test and push. All right, now let's see how we go. So here we are. It's queued again, and we can also see it's in in uh, Git bucket. Sorry. Something. Let's see. So you can see the all the changes we've been making. Might fast this forward this in YouTube if I feel like it, but probably not. Probably just have to wait. Almost done. You can see how long things have taken as well. Oh my god, it's failed. Because of this test, we've uh, made fail now, and now, ah ha ha, build, build failed in Jenkins, and this is the power of of a of a build server. So we commit, it builds it, and then it tells you if you've if you've broken it. And if I if I go here, and I can change this email, so it's it's given me the um, the output of Maven, and we've got. We've got these um, hyperlinks we can click on, and I can see the changes. So I can see the commit that broke it, and this is definitely the commit that has broken it. So broke test. If if you're doing a clean build every single time, you'll you'll definitely you'll know this for sure. This is just so crucial. I think I can even no, it's even a way sometimes to um, get to get bucket. Um, bit bucket. Don't know that I have that configured, but it's just so useful. This this um, this thing. So I can see the file, which is the file that has been changed that has um, caused the uh, the break. So and so the other killer feature of a build server is the ability to just download the latest artifact. It's very useful. So I just go back to the test bit bucket. Um, project sort of dashboard home. You can see it here. This is the latest artifact produced that was successful, and I can see all previous artifacts um, that the software has produced. But you typically don't want to save them all, otherwise you'll have no space left. So I can save him. Sorry, I already already downloaded him once um, here. So it's just the same one again. I just already downloaded him. And I'll just copy him to the target directory of my um, of my project that's on my local computer. So here, yeah. and so there it is. There, um, produced on my local computer. But I'll just take, I'll re replace it with the one produced by the build server. There we go. And now I'll um, I'll run this this guy. I'll just close it because I already have it running uh, here. And so if there are any arguments between developers of how the project's actually behaving, you can resolve it um, by downloading the, the um, artifact from the build server. So here we go. And this is my unfinished masterpiece. It's like a spring desktop project. It's, I've never bothered to finish. But So thanks for watching. I hope you find it useful. There's so many fe more features in Jenkins. Here's all the test test results, histories, and just anything you can imagine um, doing, you can practically do in Jenkins. Deploy your your jar to some internet site, which you can download from. All this stuff can be done in Jenkins. So um, thanks for watching.